YouTube. Uh, go ahead and just hit refresh. I'm just going to check just to make sure uh, we are streaming, but we should be streaming live. Welcome if you're watching this on the replay or if you're joining us live uh, to this Agency Tactics webinar. We're really excited that you're here and we're going to get into it in just a moment. I'm just making sure I have all of the, uh, the tech stuff done first. Yep, looks like we're good to go. So uh, welcome again to our Agency Tactics webinar where we're doing these webinars, these live training sessions, hands-on, tactical. We're doing them every single month. And uh, we, we bring on somebody new every month and we just kind of get right into the meat of it. We get right into step-by-step -step tutorials, how you can do stuff. We bring in industry experts in their craft, people who know what they're doing, who know what they're talking about, have experience in, in this and can answer a lot of questions. We do this live because we want to answer your questions. We want to make sure that, uh, you know, we're providing live feedback. So as, as our guests are presenting, as they're talking, as they're training, if you have a specific question, you can tap right into their expertise. And today I'm joined by Casey Nelson from Stackwise, uh, who is uh, joining us. And he's going to be showing us how we can build out three specific, very kind of customized, unique Zapier integrations. What's going on, Casey? Welcome to the live stream. Hey man, things are great. Thank you for having me. This is super exciting. First time, uh, first time, long time, I guess I could say. And uh, really excited to be able to hopefully uh, give people some tips and, and tricks about how they can build out some integrations uh, with better agency that'll help them be a little bit more productive. Yeah, and not just with better agency, right? I mean, it could be it could be done with with. I mean, you can replace better agency, and I I, I, I shouldn't say that, right? But you can re you can you know better agency is just the the tool, and there are lots of things that agents are using today who are aren't using better agency right now. They're not using better agency today, but they can use it almost probably with whatever. I'm assuming some of the examples we will be showing will be better agency, but you can think about this conceptually if you're using something else. Uh, maybe uh, you know what you do in your agency isn't really a fit for what we have. Maybe it's you know something else that you're using. You could do that, uh, but let's start with kind of the 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 problem. Like why why are we here? Because you know I remember it wasn't that long ago. Maybe just a couple. Uh, I mean, within the last couple of years, this wasn't really a problem that agents were trying to solve. Uh, I think they desired it, but the need to have to create these integrations through Zapier and these automations. I mean, it's kind of just gone up exponentially. We weren't here three, four years ago where we this was almost like a must have now. Why do you think that is and, and kind of speak to why this is important today? I think that it's an issue now because the marketplace is flooded with different vendors and different tools and softwares and applications. And a lot of them are amazing. It's, it's incredible the advancement that is occurring over the, or has occurred over the last five or 10 years. And so I think that it's a, a combination of so many different options and so many different um, capabilities that it, it's easy to get lost in the weeds or it's easy to look at your tech stack and say, you know, I, I'm married to these systems and I can't get out of it. Um, talk to people that think about switching to a different AMS and it's everyone goes through that same experience of how big an undertaking that could be. So, I think the problem is that people have difficulty moving away from the systems that they're currently using and or making those systems work together. So that's that's really what I want to try to help people do is take the systems and the programs that they're currently using that they probably like, maybe not all of them, but they probably like those systems and they're used to those systems. And let's make those systems communicate via a tool like Zapier. Um, as you said, better agency is, is a tool and it can do a lot of things. And there's some things that better agency can't do yet, but we can take whatever system you're using. And chances are, if we can get a system or a tool to generate an email, even if it doesn't have a direct integration, if it can generate an email through a parser tool, we can probably get almost anything automated that you want to have automated. So uh, I'm not sure if I answered the question totally, but I think that that's the issue is there's so many tools there's so many wonderful tools. Um, how do you find the right tools for you and then make them work together? Yeah. So what are the, some of the Zapier integrations that we're going to build out today? We're going to build out three custom ones. We're going to do step-by-step -step tutorials on them. What, what are those three that we're going to be addressing today? So the first one is my favorite one. It is a, uh, a social media app where you're going to connect all of your social media into one uh, Zapier integration, one workflow that's going to trigger off of your Facebook post. So you do have to make that post. 
and then it will trigger off into additional posts on different platforms. Uh, the second one, I think that every business, and this, I should take a quick second to say, I don't think that this is exclusive to insurance. I understand that this, you know, better agency avenue is insurance, but I think every business owner should do that, uh, do these things. And I think that it's important to be said because a lot of people watching this may have other businesses or may know people that have other businesses that are not doing some of these things. So that was my quick timeout. Going back into the second example, uh, is is anytime that somebody goes to your website and submits a new lead or a contact us form, um, what happens after that? Uh, you might be amazed at how many people, how many systems don't even generate an automatic reply that says, hey, we got your information. Um, so I'm going to show you how to build out a confirmation that comes through both as an email, as a text message, and as a ringless voicemail. And then depending on your system, in this case, Better Agency, we're also going to make sure that that information gets into Better Agency automatically. So really five or six events can happen without any human being having to touch it. Gotcha. And the third one is to really gamify what you're doing at work. We love the idea of the bells going off whenever a new sale happens. And now with people being all over and working remote, it's not like if you did have a bell in your office, which some people do, you know, how do you ring that bell digitally? Well, you can gamify so that when those wins occur, everyone's getting a little little alert on their Slack channel or their Teams channel, whatever you use, so that it kind of inspires some competition amongst your team. So those are the three that I'd like to uh, show people how to build today. Well, great. Well, let's uh, before we get into that, let's just quickly talk about, um, just give me a 30-second blurb so that people who are watching this, they'll say, well, that's great, but Casey, who are you? Um, yeah. Just give us the quick 30-second intro, and then let's dive into Zap number one. Absolutely. So um, I used to work with Integrity Personal Insurance. Um, I now work with Stackwise. So Stackwise is a data automation management service that's done for you so that you can um, automate these processes uh, yourself, or you could have a company do it for you. So um, I've been in insurance. Well, I was in insurance for six years. Um, I still am in insurance in a different role now. And my passion is to help people automate their processes. I know that sounds like a really nerdy thing. I didn't grow up thinking that would be an issue. And Nick, when you sent me a message the other day that we needed to connect to talk about the YouTube live stream, I just laughed and thought about like, if I was talking to myself in 2005, I would have no idea what that even meant. So uh, I don't know why I brought that up, but I just thought it was funny when it happened. So. No, I think it's an important distinction, right? I mean, uh, we talked a little bit about why this episode is so important today. Uh, and it's only getting more important. And so agency owners are finding this to be somewhat of a necessity. You got two avenues. You can do it yourself, which we're going to show you how to do some of this. So have at it. Right. Or, you know, when you want to really get kind of fancy and, and intricate and really kind of automate more of the processes that you have, you can have somebody like yourself come in and do it for them. So, uh, you know, you got two paths to do it yourself or you find an expert who can do it. And, and if you want to find an expert, Casey's an expert in that. So let's dive into zap number one, the social media post. Uh, and yep. let's show people kind of a step-by-step -step how they how they would want to build this or how they should build this. Absolutely. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get this opened up here. And then I'm going to try to share my screen. If you are watching this while he's getting this pulled up, go ahead and just kind of tell us in the chat. I mean, the benefit of, of this in uh, and, and a live stream is that you can ask questions, like I mentioned before. Uh, you can get feedback. You, know, you can ask, you know, if, if you have something specific to you and your agency, feel free to ask it. Or if you want feedback on something, that's why we're here. That's why we do it live. So go ahead and do that. And, uh, you know, just comment down below. Let us know who's here. I see that we have, uh, you know, some people watching this. Just let us know. We are. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Do all those things. I mean, while we're, while we're waiting for uh, the screen to pull up, and then let's uh, let's dive into it. But uh, tell us who you are. Let you let us know where you're from. Subscribe. Like the video. Really appreciate it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead here. I'm gonna share this, Casey. Okay. Let's add this to the stream. And and forgive us because I'm kind of working with a little bit of a. Uh, there we go. Hopefully you see that. Okay. So uh, they, oh, whoa, sorry. Wow. Okay, I'm going to stay on the Zapier screen. Um, okay, so if you are new to Zapier, I guess I should probably start as if people are new to Zapier. I don't want to assume anything and, and leave somebody dust. 
So if you've got a beer account, Zapier's free. Um, you can pay uh, for, for a faster turnaround time and more zaps and things like that. But you can certainly do this on the free. Don't feel like it's going to break the bank right away. Um, but once you set up Zapier account, you're going to go in and uh, this would be the screen you'd see when you'd start building a zap. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build the social media zap. So the Facebook pages, fortunately, is right there. Uh, if you were not able to find it, you could, you know, you could search Facebook. So it's not a big deal. Um, but you're going to go ahead and select the application that you want to use as a trigger. So the trigger event is the first thing that happens that then will lead to um, subsequent events after that. So we've got Facebook pages there and we're going to select the post. So we are going to do a new post by me, by you. So we're going to go ahead and select it. Okay, continue. Zapier's got to do doing this. So basically, I think this is, to, you think about Zapier, you have two major components, two major pillars. You have a trigger and you have an event or an action. And the trigger is when this happens, do this. That's the action. So think about it like this. So when you're thinking about conceptually Zapier and, and even building out your own stuff, maybe you want to build just kind of some real simple things. You don't need to get too fancy with it maybe. Think about what's the trigger, submit lead form, social yep. post, enter CRM, anything like that. That's the trigger. Then there's the action of what happens next. Exactly. So we need to connect this to an account. Um, and I will go ahead and click on this. And I know I've got so many stinking accounts there. Um, and actually, let me go back a step. I actually want to do a new post to my timeline. And I need to get it connected to my account. So uh, you'll see I have a lot there. Don't worry about that. <laughs> uh, there's my Facebook account. So this, an important step here that will be frustrating to people if they don't know it, is that you have to be with your own Facebook page, an admin of your business page account. Facebook locks down personal uh, Facebook accounts from using Zapier or really any integration tool that I'm aware of. So make sure that if you're the one setting this up, you're logged into Facebook and you are an admin of your business Facebook account. Um, otherwise you'll just, you know, get upset and it, it, it won't work out very well. So, uh, it's now connected to my Facebook account and I'm going to connect it to, um, Stackwise. So we'll just use Stackwise as an example here. And then we hit continue. So you've set up your trigger. And at this point, you need to test your trigger. So we're going to go ahead and click test trigger. And what Zapier is going to do is it's going to look into the Facebook account that you've connected. And it's going to try to find a, a post or a, an event that matches what your trigger is. So I made a post um, earlier today that this demo was going to start in an hour. So it found that because it was the most recent post on my page. If you try to test uh, your trigger and it's not finding anything, maybe just go make a, a quick post on your Facebook page and then try the trigger again. Um, I, I think there's just a bit of a time lag there where that may not pick up something that happened yesterday or the day before. So just go make a new uh, post and it should be just fine. The data here is important later, but not so much right now. Uh, all you really need to know is just make sure that it actually pulled something from your Facebook page. And you can kind of tell just by the description and the information that you're seeing in this display screen. So that's the first thing. We're going to go ahead and continue because we've got everything that we need. So the next step is I'm going to go ahead and link this to Twitter. And I believe that every social media that is free, that works with other social medias via a tool like Zapier, might as well be used. Because even if you don't use Twitter personally, there's a prospect out there who does. And you can make a post very, very simply by, by just doing something like this. So might as well do it. This is also, while you're doing this, is also a great example of, uh, for those of you who make content pieces for your website even, like... I, I'm, Casey's going to show you one way to do it with maybe certain posts, but there's probably even a way to, I think of Facebook, Twitter, 
Pinterest, um, Reddit even. Like some of these platforms, they're almost like syndication channels. And yeah. so when I create a piece of content on my website, as an example, maybe I write a blog on cyber liability insurance or – uh, you know, three things that you need to know about when adding teenage drivers to your policy, whatever the case might be, you can then instead of going to each platform and just, you know, doing it manually, you can use something like Zapier or something like what Casey's showing here. And you can then push that content into all the different syndication channels. To mm -hmm. his point, you might not be on Pinterest or you might not be on LinkedIn, but somebody else might be. And as you develop your audiences there, as you push out content and you build audiences there, you can use those syndication channels as and Zapier to kind of distribute that easily so you don't have to go through all 17,000 social media platforms and set it up. So that's another mm -hmm. kind of interesting way to kind of get your content out there too. Yes, I totally agree. And some of these channels really are one way. I mean, I don't use Twitter as a two-way tool. I know it can be. Uh, Facebook certainly does need to be a two-way tool if someone's sending you a message or leaving a positive review. But with Twitter, it's more of a one-way kind of communication. But if someone sees it, that'd be it's awesome and it's free. So for the Twitter action, we're going to go ahead and select Create Tweet. Continue. You need to choose a Twitter account. Um, there we go. Twitter stack-wise. We're going to hit continue. Now, in this field, in the message field, we can type whatever we want. It is required. So we can send a tweet or we can use the content from the Facebook post as the tweet. So that's really the ideal situation. So as we click in the message field, it gives us all options that we have to put in there. So the message from the Facebook post is right here. I'm going to select that. And even though it shortens the text, that's going to put everything that was a message from the Facebook post, and it's going to insert it into the tweet for me. Hashtags and all. Pretty cool. Um, if you wanted to, you could type in here. like, And type this would appear in the tweet after the message from the Facebook page. I don't necessarily recommend that, but just... As an educational piece, that is a function that, that does exist. Now, in most cases, or many cases, there may be a Facebook post that has an image. It's not just text. If you want that image to uh, come over and be part of your tweet, you need to select this field. And uh, you're going to want to expand your options here, show all options. And you're going to actually select the picture. So I think I picked the uh, silly picture of Chris Pratt from Parks and Rec or something. Um, and this will take that picture from the Facebook page and make it a picture in your tweet as well. I generally leave this shorten URLs field alone unless you have a reason that you need to change it. You know, why fix it? It's not broken. I'm going to go ahead and continue. So... Now we're talking about actions versus here in the Facebook, it was to test a trigger. Now we want to test the action. Does this connection actually work? Will a Facebook post result in a tweet? So you can either test and review. You can test and continue. You can skip the test. I don't encourage it, but you can. So I'm going to go ahead and hit test and continue. Okay. So this actually failed because it's posting a duplicate tweet, which, hey, that's good, right? Otherwise, I'd be putting two of the same tweets out there, um, which wouldn't bother me in this situation. But I'm going to go ahead and skip through it because I know that it works. I've already done it once. If you had not sent this duplicate tweet or you weren't trying to send a duplicate tweet, then it would turn green and it would say, you know, test successful. So we're going to go ahead now. And I'm going to hit skip test so it lets me advance. And I'm going to click this little plus sign because in this particular zap, I want there to be multiple actions, not just one action. A tweet, or I'm sorry, <laughs> a tweet. A zap, your, um, a zap can be one trigger and one action, or it could be one trigger and many actions. And in this case, we're going to add another action. Oops. Sorry about that. So I'm going to make this also a LinkedIn post. 
LinkedIn is a little underutilized. I think it's picking up uh, very underutilized. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's super underutilized. And if you and your team are on there, you're, you're ahead of the game, use it just like you would Facebook, but for professional type content. So if you're posting on your Facebook page, your business Facebook page, it should be content that would be acceptable or, or usable on LinkedIn. So I'm going to go ahead. I've chosen LinkedIn as the application. I'm going to share a company update. Continue. I'm going to choose my LinkedIn account. All right. I'm going to select a company page. So I'm going to go ahead and do Stackwise again. This is the same setup, more or less, as the Twitter setup where I'm going to, what content do I want to go into post? Well, I want it to be that same message from the Facebook post. So Facebook post to the LinkedIn post. Now, LinkedIn is a little different for posting images. Um, you certainly can. Lots of people do. And I think it's a good thing to be in the habit of posting on LinkedIn. But in terms of the Zapier integration, it's a little bit different than it was for the Twitter integration. So you actually need to post both a preview URL and the image itself. You can't just do one or the other. So I'm going to select a preview URL right here. That's that link. And then in the image, I'm going to actually select the image. So, or I'm sorry, picture. While you're uh, doing this, Casey, I want to make sure uh, we have you know a handful of people watching. I want to make sure if you does everybody kind of understand what he's building here and, and, and where he's going. Is what he's explained does it make sense? Is it something that you can replicate, or are you lost anywhere and you need uh, maybe some clarification or some feedback? Go ahead and put that down in the chat below. Uh, let us know. I'm I'm kind of observing the chat. I'll interrupt Casey if you have specific questions, and we will. Uh, We'll, uh, we'll try to get those answered for you so that you guys can walk away with as much clarity as humanly possible. So if you've got questions uh, or need additional uh, insight, go ahead and put those down below. Jared mm -hmm. says, no, it makes sense. That's that's great. Awesome. Perfect. Thanks, Jared. Um, okay. So we've got this all set up now. The LinkedIn post is ready to go. So we're going to hit continue. And again, it's going to ask us, hey, does this look like where you want things to go. I'm going to hit test and continue and it may kick me out. Nope. Cool. It did. Perfect. So this is what it looks like when the test is successful. It actually does post that um, to your LinkedIn or to your Twitter or Facebook, you know, whatever the action is that you're working on. And uh, that's just a nice little note that you're successful. Um, there are a couple other platforms that you could probably connect and Pinterest is definitely one of them. I'm not going to pretend to be a Pinterest. No, you don't have to. I think, I, I think we can let people's imaginations run wild. What are some other, right. you know, what, what, what types of content would you recommend? So I, I, I gave out the example of like a content piece. What else would you want to automate postings for? Like what other types of pieces of content? I think any kind con well, that's a great question. Um, content I've seen people do reviews. Right. Yes, absolutely. You can automate those as well. Anytime you get a Facebook review that's five stars or better, you could set up a Zap to actually create an image and post that Google review to your Facebook page. And then it would also go to uh, Twitter and LinkedIn and everything like that. That's great. Um, highlighting your staff, highlighting your team um, when they have a great, uh, a big win. Um, they have a um, I mean, you already said review, but but I know that's that's something I see a lot that I think generates a lot of content, and it also uh, I think gives your team a lot of pride. What they do is that yeah. they're being highlighted by your pages, and it's um, going to you know hopefully drive some more business opportunities for them as well as individuals. Here's, and here's one thing specific on the reviews. This is kind of my own, and tell me what you think about this because I see agents doing this now more and more with automating reviews. Mm -hmm. Here's the only. Um, advice I would give refresh your images every week or two weeks however how often you get reviews yes. because what happens is is I see the same uh, face I you know we're visual people first at least for me I see a picture first before I start reading so I see the same picture and it looks like a post I've already seen mm -hmm. and so one thing that you might want to think of is 
you know, rotating five or six different images in, you can go to any stock photography website or whatever, and you know, we can get royalty free images. And if you look for like a, a, a model, like a, like someone behind, you know, they're taking a picture of a model. Usually the same model will have 17 different types of poses, but try to mix in different pictures, different types, even different people. Um, you, you never know who that's going to resonate with, but more so than that, it makes it look fresh and it makes it look new. When, um, when I see the same uh, birthday post video that has been used for like three years in a row, I don't pay it any attention anymore. I don't even think, I don't even see it anymore. And so my yeah. brain just naturally wants to skip over it. So my advice would be to go in here and tweak these things or have, you know, Casey go in there and tweak these things where you're changing out those images periodically. You can always mm -hmm. come back to them, but maybe you have four or five and you just go one, two, three, four, five, and then you go back to the first one. That way yeah. it looks fresh. It looks new. So reviews is a good idea. Uh, content pieces is probably a good idea. Uh, highlighting your staff. Uh, what other, what else would you recommend? Because I think this is kind of goes into a different type of problem that a lot of agents have, and they go, "I don't know what even know what type of content to make or what to put out there." And I think you just need to get you don't need to overthink it. You just need to, you know, think about think about all of it. Like staff mm -hmm. reviews or staff stuff that is good for the staff and highlights your staff wins. I think it's a great idea. Most people would would think, "Well, do people really want to see that?" It doesn't matter. You just need to make the content, keep pushing it out there, and, and create a, 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 an environment where you're posting on a regular basis. But what else should someone else think about, or what else should agents think about automating to their to their feeds? It's in terms of content, you mean, Nick? Yeah, like what are some other things other than reviews and maybe like content pieces? Well, I think that questions you get from prospects and, and clients are really important to use as content pieces mm -hmm. because chances are if one person asks, 10 more have the same exact question. Yeah. And that's kind of the same rule that, that could be applied to, you know, a blog topic. Like how do I, what do I write about in a blog topic? Well, write about the, the question that you've heard two or three times this week from clients. Um, I also think, you know, community engagement is a big thing. We uh, had some people on our team that were just exceptionally connected in their communities and they were always making posts and, and content directed towards their community. And I think that people, uh, really get a kick out of that as well, because then they're not seeing the same thing, like you said, over and over and over, the same stock image or the same kind of post. Uh, but you do want to kind of create a voice, create a tone of what you do. And uh, there's some really exceptional um, social media uh, insurance agents. Uh, I guess they don't sell social media, but they do a great job on their social media. And I think that following people that are doing a great job and, and really kind of looking at how they develop the tone and the language for their social media posts is something that we can all learn from and develop our own tone and our own voice uh, in our social media. For sure. Absolutely. Anything else left on, on this? And if, and if, and if, if not, I want to make sure that uh, if you have questions on this or feedback or ideas that you guys are putting that stuff in the chat and we're getting to it, but anything else on the automated social postings? Are you asking the uh, the watchers, Nick? Or are you asking me? I'm asking you. Anything in the step by step here? No, this is uh, this is basic and straightforward. I, that's the way um, I wanted it to be. I, I don't think there's anything else to add except that um, one reason I choose to use Facebook as my trigger is because I can schedule those posts in advance. Mm -hmm. With some social media, it's difficult to schedule posts, and if you are the kind of person who wants to post every day, good for you. That's awesome. People get busy. And if you're taking the time to post every single day, there's going to be days where you don't post. Um, so what I would suggest is uh, you know, you know, taking the marketing Monday approach. I think, I think Brandon Smith is the first person I heard say that. And just take an hour on Monday and use Facebook as your trigger and schedule all your posts for the week or as many as you can. Um, and then that's going to free up more time later on, which is really the whole point of Zapier in the first place is to take multiple tasks, have them accomplished um, in fewer tasks. And in this case, if you're posting all of your Facebook or excuse me, scheduling all of your Facebook posts one day a week, you're freeing up you know, a lot of time during the day and you're not going to forget to do them later on. Yeah. So Fantastic. That's all I got on that one. Right on. Well, let's okay. move on to uh, let's move on to the second zap. OK, perfect. So um, everyone probably has a new lead form, 
contact us. Um, there, there's many different ways that someone would be an inbound opportunity to your agency. And however those come in, they, they can be imported from, from many different sources. You wanna make sure that those people hear from you almost immediately. And Better Agency has a lot of capabilities in that. And there's some ways to do it outside of the Better Agency system as well. So I'm going to quickly walk through how you could take uh, one of those opportunities and contact them a few times and also get them into your, your CRM, your AMS. So. First things first, I built a quick little Google form. Um, this, if you're using a website, you probably have Gravity or Formstack or maybe use Google Forms. I, you know, there's a lot of different vendors out there. Um, this just happened to be the fastest and easiest to build quickly. So um, if someone was to complete my Google form, um, it would be a very, very simple process. But this is, excuse me, what I'm gonna link it to. So I'm going to do, um, this is interesting though, uh, you actually have to do a response in a spreadsheet. You can't just do a link, uh, I'm sorry, uh, in submission straight from a Google form. So um, within Google, um, and Nick, I feel like I should show people this in case they don't know. Yeah. Um, so most people have probably seen a basic Google form. Lots of schools use them, lots of businesses use them, they're great. Um, so this is what the user would see and what you need to actually link this Zapier connection is you actually need the um, spreadsheet that comes with it. So whenever someone submits this information, um, you know, so I'll do Nick. Here's, I don't know if I did enough numbers. Nick, at, Nick what's the, the email address that doesn't go anywhere? Mailinator. Mailinator. Inator? Uh, uh, I N. There we go. Yep. Perfect. Dot com. Oh, looks like it works. So now, now we've submitted this and boom, there it is. Okay. So we have this nice little database building and this Google sheet is what we'll use to then take the information and, and uh, put it into Zapier. So, so we're going to choose the event as a response in a spreadsheet, which is what you just saw occur. I'm going to pick my account here. Now, it's connected to your Google account. You need to tell it where, where to look to get that new value on the spreadsheet. So I'm going to give the spreadsheet title, which is right here, the new lead form demo. And it's going to say responses automatically. And then in case you have multiple tabs on the same sheet, you're going to need to indicate which tab to go to. The sheet only has one tab, so it's pretty easy. But if you have more tabs, just make sure you're you're going to have a Zapier look right for And, you know, while you're doing this, I mean, this is, you know, this is the process with Google Forms, and that's because it creates a spreadsheet. But if you're using Typeform or Formstack or Alchemer, formerly Survey Gizmo, or any other type of form software, Gravity Forms, yep. you know, it's not you're not going to have that type of spreadsheet. It's just going to say... Gravity forms when a new when a new form is submitted, then you're gonna just pick the form that was submitted. Yep. So exactly. the spreadsheet thing is just because that's the way that Google Forms operates with the spreadsheets. You don't have it's you know, take that step out if you're using some other type of thing. I know a lot of agents are using gravity forms with their website because it's built in a lot of, you know, if, if you're with uh, like advisor evolved, it comes with gravity forms. Uh, you know, so they're utilizing that. So it's really whatever form software you're using, just about any any form software that if you're, if you're looking at form software, if it doesn't integrate with Zapier, forget it. I, I can't think of any legitimate form software that doesn't integrate with Zapier. Hopefully one day we think the same thing about AMSs and insurance technology. But uh, for the for, for the forms world, they all do. Anything worth its salt integrates with Zapier. Exactly. Right. And that's a great that's a great point. I should have brought that up too, is that this was just meant to be just a, a simple free version of a uh, you know, form collection tool. But all of those forms you mentioned are wonderful tools that would give you this data without that, that extra step of the spreadsheet. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so while Nick was talking, I ran the trigger and we did find the data that we need now to uh, go through and, and build out the rest of the connection. So I'm going to continue. 
And now um, I'm going to, um, well, let's, which way should we go here? We can go a couple different ways. Um, depending on the form tool that you're using, you may need to use some extra steps in your process. This does not require extra steps because I'm going to go back to the trigger event. The test data, as you can see, breaks up first name and last name. And this is something that a lot of people run into where maybe your form tool doesn't ask for first name and last name separately. Maybe it just says name. And people put in their first name, space, last name because the form told them to do. Part of the problem then becomes that that data is lumped together and you might need to break it up. So I do, uh, Nick, do you think it's okay if I show people how to use the formatter real quick? Yeah, for sure. While you're doing that, I'll say why it's important. So if you're making forms, make sure you ask for first name and last name because I'll give you a practical example of why it's important. Let's say you want to set up some sort of automated email campaign. There's nothing that sounds, there's only, there, there, the worst thing you can do is say, hi, name, right? That's the worst thing you can do. But the second worst thing you can do in your automated email is say, hi, Casey Nelson, because mm -hmm. that immediately lets me know it's automated. And it's not real. It's just, it's just, you. the goal of automated communications is to make it not feel automated. Yeah. The savvy person, if they take three extra seconds, they'll know it is. But at first, the first impression is you don't want it to feel automated. And if you, if you don't break up first and last name, then you're not going to be able to separate that in your automation where you say, hi, first name, whatever they enter, instead of, hi, full name, Nicholas Ayers. So that's why you want to break them up. So when you're making forms, make sure you do separate those fields. First name, last name. Don't do the full name or the whole name. I know you think it, it, it cuts down on, it makes it easier for them to fill out, but it's going to make it a pain in the butt if you're trying to do any automation on the back end. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And anybody who's gotten into Zapier and tried to, to build out some automations, you've probably experienced something like that. So um, I just want to take a quick sidebar here, even though this form doesn't require what Nick's talking about, just to show you uh, the formatter tool and how you can go actually go ahead and do that. So um, the next step in the for in this process would be to add a formatter step and a formatter the formatter is something that is is zapier or it's part of zapier it's not a extra application or, or program that you need to go purchase or, or have a subscription to it it comes with zapier and so once you've selected the formatter you're going to actually choose what type of event so in this case we're working with text um, you see there's a number of different options you would just select text and continue. Now, when you selected text, you're telling Zapier that you need to transform something. You need to change the data that came in into something else that goes out. And so how are we gonna transform this? Well, uh, there's a lot of different options. I'm just actually gonna type split and we're gonna go with split text. From here, you would tell uh, Zapier, okay, what text field are we needing to split? And let's just pretend this says name instead of first name. You would just select Nick. You would go to the segment index. And you're going to tell it first. So what I just did, if, if this said Nick Ayers, Nick space Ayers, I would have actually separated out the Nick and it would not take the errors. It knows so that because can... of the space, correct? Right. Yes. Yep. So that's a, an easy way to do it. And then if you did need the second or the last name, which you would probably in terms of what you want to put into your AMS, um, you would want to then add a, a second step that's exactly like this one. But instead of selecting first name, you're going to select uh, last name. And then it would pull out those fields separately. So you could put them into your AMS or CRM or whatever you want to do with it. Um, you know, Nick said you don't want automation to feel uh, automation. Maybe, maybe you know, you want to say Mr. Ayers instead of, hey, Nick, you know, you can do whatever you want to do. Doc. Um, but that's just a little bit of a side note. I'm going to delete this step because it's unnecessary for what we're doing right now. It's just something that I remember that headache when it happened to me the first time. 
and I want, I want to try to save somebody that headache if uh, if they're trying to build something themselves. So with this, um, we're going to then add a step to uh, let's go ahead and put them into better agency. Okay, let's assume you're a better agency user and you use better agency as your CRM, then um, and or your AMS and you're gonna go ahead and you're going to uh, put them in there. So you're going to, in this case, you're gonna create a prospect, not a client. I'm just assuming that this new lead form is new leads, not clients updating their data. So we've got a, a new prospect here. We need to, again, connect the account. So I'm gonna connect it to my better agency account there. Now, there's a lot of fields here, but there's not a lot of data coming in. So we don't need to have values in all of these places just yet. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the basics here. So I'm going to do the email that came in from the web form. So while he's doing this, what you can do is from these web forms and, and think about it in your agency, right? You have new lead, but you also have service so if it was an existing customer you can fill out the same thing for a current customer where it updates a customer and you're doing something around the service or the renewal forms maybe you're asking the question you're at renewal there's all kinds yeah. of ways that you could use forms to your crm using mm -hmm. zapier so think about all the agency touches that you have with customer touches that you have in your agency from sales service claims renewals mm -hmm. uh billing all that stuff. You can think about all the, all the ways that you would want to use a form. And if you haven't watched it, go back to our last interview with Kurt Tonneson from um, a Review Risk where we talked about forms and you know all the different things that you would use forms for. And then you can use this. So if you're using like Gravity Forms, I, I use Gravity Forms as an example because it's very native to WordPress. And you can then make this data come over and then start automation campaigns or trigger automation campaigns, or move pipeline stages, or any of the things that you'd want to do in your CRM, or what I call uh, policy telekinesis. Like I can move things with my mind. It just um, it, it allows things to happen automatically, to where you don't have to feel like you have to do all that stuff. So, you know, that that thing, don't just think about it from new lead perspective, but think about it from all the operations that you have in your agency. I love that. Policy telekinesis is that that's what, you what I've it? coined that's... for the Ivans down for Ivans in better agency because Ivans will move all the stuff all the pipeline stages, so yeah. you don't have to. So I tell, I call it policy telekinesis. It just does it. It's like it's like using the force. An automation Jedi. I love it. I love it. Um, so while Nick was talking, I mapped the basic fields for better agency users. You also want to make sure you tell it where to go uh, in the pipeline. So most cases, I'd assume new lead, but as Nick mentioned, there's a lot of different use cases where maybe this is going to service or maybe this is somebody who's already scheduled an appointment. You can pick whatever stage you want. Also important to select the lead source because the lead source um, will trigger the automation campaign within better agency. So if you want a very, so I have a better agency YouTube demo, right? Here we are. And I'm gonna use that as the lead source. Um, policy type, you know, you can do a lot of different things there. I'm going to do basic. Um, I obviously am doing different things with better agency than a lot of people are. <laughs> um, and assign an owner. There you go. Um, if anybody wants to know how to do how to build a round robin Zapier where you can round robin assign leads to your team, it's a bit more of an advanced class situation. I'd be happy to reach out to people and share uh, that information with them, but, but that takes about seven or eight steps. It's awesome if you need it. I'm happy to help if you if you ever need that. Um, but in this case, we wouldn't need any round robin information. I'm going to scroll through all this because I don't have this information in our lead form. Let's get all the way down and there we go. So now here you can really see better than you could on the um, social media app, really what information do we have coming in and where is it going? Okay, so we can really clearly see the email, the name, the first name, last name, phone number. Where is it going in your pipeline? What's the lead source? What's the policy type? Who's the owner? So uh, take a second, just make sure it's what you want it to be, uh, that you've mapped everything correctly. And then you go ahead and, and test and continue.
right? Any and questions on this as uh, we're testing this and um, we get this dialed in? Is there any questions that anybody has when it comes to new lead forms or kind of thinking of ways to, to automate these things with Zapier and getting them into some of the systems that you guys are using? Uh, we're showing a CRM example, but it doesn't just have to be that. And, and in that, it could be multiple steps. It could be alert a Slack. One of the things that I did is I had an additional step in here where I alerted a Slack channel. We were all remote, and I have my service team and my VAs in a particular Slack channel. I, I updated them and said, hey, notify them that this change request came in too. So they saw it on the CRM side. And just in case they didn't see it in the CRM side, they saw it on the Slack side. So there's other, other things you can do here. But if you have questions, feel free to put them down below, and uh, we'll get to those as well. And Nick, I love that you said that because that was actually one of the third things I was going to build. And for some reason, oh, I didn't. Oh, give it away. I don't know, but I didn't consider just throwing it into this zap. Like, why build a separate zap yeah. for this? So um, I'll just go ahead and add. Well, one of the things I'll add it here. Nick's exactly. Right. So here, we can just add another step. And let's say, yeah, like I think, uh, like I love Slack. So, so let's, yeah. let's use a Slack channel as a, um, as a test case here. So we're just going to add Slack. We're going to say, send a channel message. Let's go ahead and pick our account here. You can pick individual channels. You can alert specific people. Like I could tag, I could, I could tag like a specific person in the Slack channel. Mm -hmm. Really unique. So, and I'm not too familiar with teams, but I'm assuming you can do the same thing with teams. Yes, um, you can. Yeah, we we've done that in the past. The only, uh, <laughs> this is a silly thing to gripe about, but the only thing that you can't do in Teams that you can do in Slack that I'm aware of was you can't send a GIF. So uh, you, it'd be kind of cool to like send a little GIF and it's all, like you said earlier, it's always different, right? So you don't want your team to get that like, that that visual, uh, like, like what am I trying to say? Like they ignore it because it looks the same every time. Yeah. Well, every time a new lead comes in, there's a what new- What I lead. did. What I yeah. did is, I, so I alerted both, uh, for, for sales leads, I alerted our sales team. And for service stuff, I alerted our service team. But what I did is, because uh, you can't, I, at least when I tried it, you couldn't do the gifts, but you could do the emoji uh, that is like the avatar for it. So mm -hmm. for new lead, it was like a money, it was like a money bag. Nice. Uh, and I made that the, the icon for that. Or uh, if they filled out particular forms, like a, like a auto insurance form or a home insurance form, then the emo the avatar the emoji was a car, uh, right. and it's a new you know new new website lead. Or if it was a home, it was a it was the house emoji. So I use like emojis as avatars because I mean if you if you use Slack, you're very familiar. Like emojis is like uh, a native language. It's just so big that like I you know we use emojis for everything in our Slack channel, and you know I'll do like five thousand different emojis for like someone's message or whatever just for fun, but. I would make the, that emoji the visual thing. So as different leads came in for umbrella or auto or home or life or, or whatever, I just, I, I separated it by using different icons as the notification icon in Slack. Sure. Yeah, no, I love that. I think, you know, it makes it feel more informal and, and when you're it's communicating fun. internally. Yeah, totally. And I think it's important too, while we're going down this rabbit hole, um, to have your internal communication happen on a platform like Teams or Slack and then save email for external communication with clients, prospects, carriers, whatever, so that your inbox isn't constantly, your email inbox isn't constantly getting filled up with like a quick reply to something just so somebody confirms that they got it. You know, like keep your team communication on a separate platform if you can. And in most cases, people are already using Microsoft, so Teams should be available. Um, Slack is free. So, might as well do it. And I think it helps people separate, you know, work, work talk versus client talk. Yeah. And we, uh, we used to have a free version. I actually upgraded to the paid version because mm -hmm. the only difference is it allows you to go back a lot further in the history. And so uh -huh. if I told somebody, Hey, if I was checking in on something and you know, if, if, if small talk happens on Slack, so you can, you can quickly rank up like a thousand uh, messages, you know, on, on a topic. Sure. So I wanted to be able to the ability to go back. So I, you know, you can use a free version. I would actually encourage you to look into the paid version if you're gonna if you have, you know, a, a rather sizable team that who's gonna be communicating in there regularly. You want to at least go back there and track it. Right, makes sense. Um, 
Okay, so um, I added the message, hey, new prospect, Nick Ayers. Who's it coming from? The new lead bot. You don't have to do that, but I just do it. Um, you can add a little icon if you want to, and uh, that's cool if you want to. Do you want to include a link to this app? I generally don't, but everyone can, can kind of come up with their own answer to that if they need to. Um, what Nick and I were talking about adding a GIF, that would go here if you had Giphy. If you have a Giphy account, you can add a step to find a GIF and then use the link that you get from finding the GIF in here, and then it will actually send that GIF with you um, with the message. And you can even like sort by rating. I mean, it, we've seen some GIFs, right? Everyone has that you probably don't want to be sending at work. So, <laughs> I, I he's, forget been my sli- he's been in my Slack channel. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, I mean, know who you're sending stuff to, I guess, is all you need to know. But, uh, but yeah, they do have ratings. I can't remember if it's it's like movie ratings, but you can you can make sure you're not going to accidentally send somebody something and, and have it be an issue. Um, okay, cool. Uh, I'm not going to schedule this, but you could. If you wanted all of these to come through on Mondays at, at 9 a.m. for some reason, you could, you could schedule these. That's fine. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do here, but I'm, I'm kind of yeah. boring everybody with this at the moment. So we're going we're gonna to go continue. And let's go ahead and test. There we go. I don't know if you guys could hear the little yep. bug. Yep, yep. I love that noise. So, yeah. So in this, you know, if we scroll back up to the top in this zap, you know, we got a new lead. We sent it into Better Agency. We notified the producer. And then if you have an automation campaign built out in Better Agency, it immediately started that process as well. Um, Oh, my gosh. And I forgot one other step. Goodness gracious, Nick. I'm glad we're live. Um, One thing that I always like to do, too, is I like to send a ring voicemail anytime somebody submits um, this information. Because with, with Better Agency, I don't want, in my opinion, I don't want automated communications going out 24-7, that could cause some problems for obvious reasons. It, um, so my automation from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Well, I kind of feel differently when it comes to a ringless voicemail because if someone just got off work or just opened their mail or whatever the reason is that they're filling out this, this new lead form at 9 p.m., I still want to get this ringless voicemail at 9.01. And so I set up a slide broadcast message as well so that they, you know, at least hear from us as close to immediately as possible. So I choose to use slide broadcast. It's the it's the one I like. It works with Zapier. Um, we're going to uh, make this action a new audio file. So you would need to have an audio file already saved in slide broadcast, which is really easy to do. And we're going to connect our account. Continue. You don't have to name it, but you can. So we could say VA demo ringlet source mail. We're going to select a file. So this is already in um, slide broadcast. It's saved. So there it is. We're going to select the phone number it's going to go to. And I know that I did not put enough digits in Nick's phone number uh, in the test case, so that's okay. You also need to pick a caller ID. <clears throat> so it does need to be a real number. So do check that. You can also pick a time. So I mentioned earlier that I really like it to happen within two minutes, which is the Zapier cycle time for, for the account I have. So what uh, the code you put in there is now. You could put um, 11 a.m. And then it will store all of the the opportunities until 11 a.m. the next day. And it will send them at 11 a.m. So you can can do a lot of different things here in terms of what what the start time is. It's going to ask you if you want to send it to mobile phones only. No, I do not. I'm not not sure how many people are using a landline, but but I'm sure they have voicemail. So I'm just going to go ahead and roll with it. And I'm going to continue. Now I'm going to uh, not going to bother testing this because I put in a fake phone number that wasn't enough digits, so it wouldn't be sent anyway. But um, it's just a nice 
I, I think, in my opinion, it's a nice way to make sure that that person gets that voicemail in an unintrusive way uh, that they can then know that they've heard my voice, they know that I got their information, and that I'll be reaching out to them again really soon. Any, uh, any questions coming through, Nick? No questions from should... anybody else. So if you have questions, go ahead and put them down in the chat so we can get those answered here live. But no, I think uh, I think we're good here. What's, okay. uh, what's in the back for zap number three? Okay, so zap number three is uh, it's going to be very similar to the step we put into this <clears throat> Slack channel, uh, the uh, Slack message. So what we're going to do instead of is uh, we're going to gamify the process. So it's really, I mean, our team was so competitive. We had a championship bell. Um, they loved being alerted whenever new sales were coming through. So, so um, that's that's what we're going to do here. Again, we're going to start with better agency. We're going to create the trigger event as an opportunity stage move. So um, thinking about the opportunity pipeline and getting people through to the end. And we're going to um, connect the account. And you know, you do have to do this every time. Cool. It's good because that way you don't accidentally put something someplace, you know, that, that cause a problem. So here, as we're setting up the trigger, we want to create, um, we want to select one. Oops, my screen. There we go. So one. So anytime anybody moves an opportunity to one, that would be the trigger. Um, you can select this for just the owner, like one owner, if you wanted to. Um, like I have only one user in mind. But if you have multiple owners, you can leave this blank. Um, some of these fields are going to say required, but this one doesn't. So I'm going to continue on without selecting an assigned owner. And I'm not going to have anything here because I haven't won anything yet. But it will give me the opportunity to continue. <clears throat> So now we're going to go back to Slack or Teams, whichever. Maybe there's another system that your team uses, or maybe you want it to send an email. Probably wouldn't email, but um, you do you. We're going to send a channel message. In this case, we want to make sure it's a channel message because we want the team to know. We want that uh, conditional response that, like, oh, somebody else made a sale, or it's getting towards the end of the month. Like, oh yeah. man, who is that? Like, I really, you know, I'm, I, I think. Was, yeah, I know that. I think that's a great point. I think another uh, application that a lot of people use, where you can where you can integrate into the Zapier automation, or even the one before it. I know a lot of agents are using Ring Central, and mm -hmm. Ring Central has a really good Zapier integration. So if you want to create some sort of celebratory thing, you know, you want something to the one stage, you can send a group text to to everybody on the team, like, "Hey, Casey just sold. Uh, you know, just close this policy for this person, and maybe even put in the the premium amount if you want to." But that's yeah. an, you know, Ring Central is another good thing. I think of like the 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 applications that a lot of agents use and have really good Zapier integrations. You've, we've already mentioned some from Slack, a better agency, uh, Slide Broadcast. Uh, Ring Central is a really good one. They have got a really easy one. Um, you know, you can send texts for uh, missed calls uh, or whatever, so you can text them back, "Hey, I'm on a call," or "I'll call you back." You know, there's a lot of easy to use applications that integrate really well with Zapier and that you could put in the same process as well. So when you want to correct, congratulate a, a specific member on your team, send them a text message, "Hey," or send send every send everybody in sales a text message. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, one specific one that we built out um, at Integrity was that we had two producers who wanted to have a text message sent to their personal phone 24 seven, anytime a new lead came through. Yeah. And so we were able to build that through ring central to text their own cell phone numbers. Um, and you know, that, that helped them be more alert on the weekends. If they weren't doing something that was, you know, taking up their time, they could go and actually address that, that new lead in, in a, a expedient way. So yeah, totally. Ring central's got some really, really wonderful Zapier integrations. Okay, cool. Um, so here we are in Slack. We're going to pick the channel that we want this to go in. Um, a lot of times I'd advise if you use Slack or Teams to set up like a sales channel, but yeah. uh, I don't have one right now. So I'll just do sales, one. service, <laughs> claims, yep. anything like that. Important info, stuff like that. Yeah. So, like, uh, so then we're going to add some message text here. Oops, new sale by Nelson. 
Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry, because it could be other people. So new sale alert. And you can add icons and uh, emojis and in here, too, uh, if you want to. It's not something that I can show you right now, but you can. And then you could even add, you know, you could add the name of the person um, if you want. There's no data in there right now, but. Um, and you could even put, you know, uh, the producer name somewhere in here, signed owner, boom. So the whole team would see new sale, who is the client. You could even probably add premium and then you could add, you know, who is the assigned agent. So who was the one that made that sale? It's kind of a cool, cool deal. Name sales bot. And I'm not going to include a link to the zap. If you, again, as I mentioned earlier, if you have a free Giphy account and you want to add a GIF each time this comes through and you want to make it a nice little PG rating, that's cool. You can schedule it if you want to. Uh, most people turn off their Slack at night anyway, I think. Yeah, the notifications don't come through usually. Through, right. uh, yeah, so you don't need to worry about scheduling them. And then you say test and continue, and there we go. It was successful. So... Yeah, those are those are three of my favorite zaps. I mean, there's so many more. As you mentioned, there's really no limit to what you can do. Um, some systems have limits as to what they will allow to go in or out of Zapier or through their API. But um, if you can get a program to generate an email because of a task or generate an email really for anything, you can then even parse data out of those emails and you could get them into Zapier that way too. So. Um, I love yeah, that. I mean, I think the reason why we touched on it a little bit in the beginning, but I don't think we touched on this point. The reason why Zapier is such a necessity now in the agency software space is because, or the agency operations is because we're using more systems now. We need those systems to work together. We need those systems to, to, to communicate. And the fact that it's 2021 and AMS systems still don't have a Zapier integration is, I'm going to soapbox here for a second, is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, and so you, you need to be working with systems and technology that wants to work with others. And if you don't, then I would highly encourage you to look elsewhere. Um, Casey, thank you so much for building this. I know people are probably going to watch this and we're going to send this out in the replay to, to a lot of people. We're going to get, a, uh, you know, a lot more people to see some of this stuff and there's surely they're going to be, uh, questions and they're going to want to know more. They're going to think, you know what? I don't have time to build this stuff. I know this is important, but I don't want to build it. Uh, right. Where where can people find out more information about you? How can people connect with you so that if they want you to build all their stuff, if they need consultation, you can go in there and can say, hey, this is the stuff that you're doing. Here's where you need to, here's where we can automate stuff through Zapier or through other processes. Mm -hmm. Where uh, where can people go? Where can they find you? How can they get a hold of you? So people can find me um, at Stackwise. This is a project that I've started to try to help uh, business owners, not just insurance agents, but um Everybody, it's a you know done for you solution. We'll provide um, guidance. We'll build it. We'll host it. We'll maintain it for you, and take it off of your plate. And so Stackwise is um, uh, where you can find me. You can also uh, well you can find me on Facebook, on LinkedIn, um, anywhere you you'd like to reach me. I'm pretty available. Try to be as available as I possibly can. But uh, Stackwise, no C. S T A K W I S E is um, is my my project, and, and I want to help people. I just you know want to guide people through um, the the graph uh, there on the right. Really is what developing automation feels like, bouncing between systems and testing, and and really trying to get in there and make sure it accomplishes the goal. And it can be very tedious, very time consuming. Uh, we don't. We don't want people to have to go through that because the power of automation really can unlock so much potential for your business. So um, it's a it's a done for you solution, and this is where they can find me. Perfect. And so it's not uh, correct me if I'm wrong here. It's not just Zapier integrations. It's it's kind of evaluating the entire technology platform and, and stack that an agency has, and really more so than that, going deeper into their operations efficiencies and uh, their workflows to kind of simplify it, make it more efficient. Uh, make mm -hmm. it more productive for everybody on the team and right. not have to deal with the, the the burden of figuring out the technology. I mean, having the technology pieces in play, but making so making it so that the infrastructure and everything built around it and through it and with it is right. done well. Exactly. Right. And it's not designed to try to get you to switch to a new system 
It's not designed to get you to, um, you know, drop what you're doing. It's actually designed to do the opposite. It's designed to take what you currently use, um, if you like it, and make it make it integrate, make it talk, make it um, so your life's easier. Because if you're spending time every day doing the same thing two times or three times, um, let's go ahead and automate that. You know, or even say, just not even the things that they're doing every day, the things that they want to do but don't know how to do. That's also true. That's also a great point. Absolutely. Because you might not even really know what's possible because if you're running a business, you don't have time to, to look into all these different tools and figure out how they talk to each other. So let's, you know, hand it off. I mean, really, it's like mowing your yard. I mean, it's 103 where I am right now in Texas, and I don't want to mow my yard. Um, I would gladly pay somebody else to do it and use that time more productively on, on business. Um, it's it's same approach, you know. Have somebody else deal with your automation so that you can go run your business and, and make more money, make more sales. That's cute. That's cool. He said uh, 103 was hot. Um <laughs> I'm here in Phoenix. 103 is a, is a nice breezy day uh, oh, in the summertime. But uh, no, this is great. Uh, I think this is a much needed service. I think that uh, agency owners and, and people who are working for agencies would be uh, well advised to go and, and check it out and, and, and have the conversation with you and, and see you know where, where they need to fit in. So uh, Casey, I want to thank you so much for joining us on this webinar. Hopefully, if you're watching this and you've made it all the way to the end here, uh, hopefully you've gotten some things out of it. Hopefully you've you've thought of some different ways to, to build it. And hopefully the, the step-by-step tutorials was helpful. Go ahead. If you have comments, con continue to comment down below. We'll try to answer those questions. We'll monitor that. I get notifications when, when people uh, comment on stuff. So we'll answer them. Uh, we'll try to get feedback to you uh, and, and thoughts and opinions uh, otherwise. And if you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it out uh, wherever you can. We really appreciate it. Casey, thank you so much. Thank you everybody for tuning in. We will see you guys on the next Agency Tactics live stream webinar. So see you guys soon. Thanks for having me, Nate.